hi there and welcome back to the channel in this video i'm going to be working on one of the photographs from episode three of my spanish road trip i will be using luminosity masks and blend if in photoshop to combine two bracketed exposures i hope you find it interesting these two images were captured as part of a bracketed set uh, the one on the left for the for the foreground on the, the pinnacle and the one on the right for the sky now it's not possible to merge them using photo merge with any kind of great accuracy because the clouds are moving really really quickly and it just creates a very messy kind of a, a ghosting effect in the sky so i'm going to merge them in photoshop instead i've already gone through and tweaked both images so that uh, i have them the foreground the way i wanted and the background the way i wanted or at least the starting point that i want them at so i'm going to right click with both selected and hit edit it in and open as layers in Photoshop. And as they come in here, I won't need to align them because they were both taken on a tripod and the, the, the conditions were fairly still, even though the clouds are moving quickly. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the darker layer to the top. And I'm going to put a dark or a black layer mask on it by clicking option and clicking the mask icon or alt on, on a pc alt and the mask icon so now we have the bottom layer showing the top layer is completely masked out and i'm going to use luminosity masks for this i'm going to use the lumenzia panel and i'm going to click on l for the lights mask which gives me quite a good separation between the pinnacle and the sky. However, I want to refine that a bit if I can, so that the pinnacle is almost completely black, blocking any changes that I make, and the sky goes a bit whiter. And in Lumenzia, when you create, when you click on the lights or medium or dark, you get this uh, layers group of layers that pop up. And the one I'm going to pick is the levels layer. And if I click into it, what I can do is I can drag in from the left to darken that rock and click it, drag it from the right to brighten the sky so that we get a very, very clearly defined mask. And then I'm going to click on the select button. So now I have a selection of the sky. If I hit Command H on the keyboard, you'll see the, the marching ants around the edge of the pinnacle and the horizon. I just click Command H to take that away again. Control H on a, on a PC. So what I can do now is I can paint in the sky where I want it without worrying about painting over where the pinnacle is because that's masked out. So the first thing I need to do is to change my foreground color to white. You can do this, if you press D on the keyboard, it gives you white as your foreground color and black as your background color. And I'm going to choose a brush. Brush tool is selected. And I'm going to work at a 100% opacity and a flow of around about 20%. 18 will do. Okay, and then as I start to paint in on the sky, you can see that I can paint in the sky as I drag the mouse across. It's not affecting the pinnacle at all. So we're getting that dramatic sky and then I'm building up the effect of the cloud with each brush stroke. Come down closer to the horizon, get a bit of it there. And as I said, it's only the, the light area that is selected so I can paint without worrying too much about going over the edge. Okay, and that looks pretty good I think already. I might just do a little bit more here in this area. So the only problem we have is that those bright areas in the sky are quite a distraction. So I'm going to see if we can maybe do something more to get rid of those. And I'll do this by with by using Blendif. 
So what we would I will do first of all is I will combine these two layers into one new layer. And on a Mac it's Command Option Shift E, which stamps it to a new layer. I, on the PC it will be Control Alt Shift E. So now I'm going to pick the lasso tool and select the darkest parts of the sky and around here. And I'm going to copy that to a new layer. That's Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC. And if I hit V on the keyboard, I can move that selection around. And I want to just try and place the darker areas over the lighter areas in the main image. And then if I come over to the Layers palette and I double click where it says Layers 2 in the grey area to the side of that, we get the Layer Style box pops up. And down at the bottom here we have the Blend If options. And we've got Current Layer and Underlying Layer. And in this situation what we want to do is I'm going to drag these, this slider across to the right. And as I do it you can see that it starts to fill in some of the lighter areas of the sky. If I now click on the Option button and hold it down while I'm clicking on this slider here, I can pull them apart and we can blend the clouds in like that. If I click, click OK there and I turn on and off that layer, you can see that it has darkened in that patch of sky. Okay, so now let's take this image back into Lightroom. So I'll go File and Close. Hit Save. And when it's fi finished saving, it should bring us back into Lightroom. Okay, and here we have our merged image. So I can go into the Develop module on this and do any final tweaks. Um, I'd like to try and bring out some of the aqua colour in the water here. So let's go into the HSL colour panel and as it happens aqua is the last one I use so it's popped up. We slide the saturation across and maybe bring down the luminance a little bit. Go into the blues, increase the saturation there bring down the luminance again. And I think we're pretty much done with this image. You might just look up in the basic panel and just do a little bit of a global contrast adjustment. Take the highlights down, bring up the whites, open up the shadows, and bring down the blacks. And you might see just little blue patches appearing in the shadow areas. That's just a warning that that's gone completely to black. That there's no detail there. Uh, so I might bring that black back up or maybe bring the shadows up a little bit and see if I get rid of it. Okay, and there we have our finished image. If you found this useful, please hit the like button and uh, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, if you'd like to see more content like this.